This problem is notably similar to the previous problem, but now we're actually given the KB, so this is actually more straightforward. Since Benadryl is a weak base, we're going to do what it does, what any weak base does. The base, we just have a abbreviated as Ben here, plus water, yields the conjugate acid and hydroxide. That's what every single weak base is going to do in an aqueous solution. We'll write out our ICE. We'll do our ICE table. So this is going to be 0 0.0098. We don't care. Zero and zero minus x plus x plus x. And this is going to end up being 0 0.0098. As you may have guessed already, while it still is minus x, that x is going to be insignificant compared to the 0 0.0098 molar there. Zero plus x is x and zero plus x is x. Now we'll write out our equilibrium expression. KB is equal to products, so the conjugate acid, HBen, times hydroxide, divided by the initial concentration of Benadryl. So, plugging in our values, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to x times x, x squared, divided by 0 0.0098. Okay. So we'll multiply the 0 0.0098 through. So we'll end up getting x squared is equal to 3, oops, 9.8 times 10 to the negative eighth. And we'll take the square root of both sides to give us x is equal to 3.13 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now remember, that is our concentration of hydroxide. So when we take the negative log, we get the pOH. The pOH of the solution ends up being 3.5. So 14 minus that gives us our pH which is 10.5. For a carboxylic acid, remember that the idea is the more we can polarize this bond here, the easier it is to break, and therefore the more protons an acid will be give, able to give up, therefore the stronger the acid. So in order to trick our, out our acid, to make it stronger, we can add electronegative elements over here. And through something called the inductive effect, the more electronegative elements we add here, the more polarized this bond will become, and therefore the easier it'll be to break. So the weakest of these acids is just going to be number three. It just has a whole bunch of hydrogens here. Okay? Not a lot going in terms of electronegativity. Up next, it'll be the one with the two bromines. So choice two, followed by the one with two chlorines. Choice three, ah, choice one rather. Followed by the one with, wow, three chlorines. That's gonna really polarize this OH bond. So choice four. So that's gonna be our order. 3, then 2, then 1, then 4. Salts. Are they acidic? Are they basic? Are they neutral? Let's find out. In general, the rule of thumb is we want to take our salt, I'm just going to use a generic salt, MA, and consider what it's going to break apart into in an aqueous solution. The primary questions we want to ask ourselves, now there are some exceptions, but in general, we want to ask ourselves, is the cation the positively charged species acidic and is the anion the negatively charged species basic okay now here's another 
part where knowing your strong assets and strong bases is going to come in really, really, really quite handy. So the first thing we're going to look at is this ammonium salt here. Anytime you have a nitrogen with four bonds, it's going to have a positive charge. And in this case, the positive charge is balanced with this chloride. Ammonium salts are all completely soluble in aqueous solution, so it'll break apart into this ammonium, NH4+, and chloride. Now then, chloride is the what, what of a what, what, therefore making it what? You got it! It's the conjugate base, quote-unquote, of a strong acid, therefore making it negligible. So if something has a negative charge, and it's the conjugate of a strong acid, then it's going to be a negligible base. Ammonium, though, has a positive charge, and if something has a positive charge and it's not a group 1 metal cation, like Na plus or K plus, or a group 2 metal cation, calcium and below, it's going to be an acid. So it turns out all ammonium salts are actually acidic. So this one will be acidic and will have a pH less than 7. Calcium fluoride would break apart into Ca2 plus and 2F minus. Well, calcium 2 plus is a group 2 metal cation, calcium and below, appropriately enough, so it's negligible. F minus is the conjugate of a weak acid, HF. So that means that F minus must be basic, which is not what we're looking for here. All right, next up, let's take a look at aluminum nitrate. Aluminum nitrate would turn into Al3 plus. Al3 plus, once again, positive charge and is not a group one metal cation or group two calcium and below. So this will be acidic. And nitrate, I don't think so, nitrate. You're the conjugate of a strong acid, therefore making it negligible. So this one is indeed going to be acidic. And then finally is hydrofluoric acid. Wink, wink. You can't see me winking, but I'm winking right now. Acidic, yes, it would dissociate into H+. And that is indeed acidic. I'm just going to change this arrow here to an equilibrium since it's a weak acid. Okay, so it turns out that one three, and four are all indeed acidic. So choice E is going to be the way to go right here. This one's pretty straightforward. In an acidic solution, which statement is true? Well, in an acidic solution, we're going to have more hydronium than hydroxide. Okay? Likewise, in a basic solution, you would have more hydroxide than hydronium. In this question, we're looking for the KEQ of this reaction right here, given the Ka of HNO2. So really this question just becomes about recognizing what our reaction is. Well, our reaction that we have is NO2 minus, which is the conjugate base of HNO2, reacting with water and hydrolyzing it to form hydroxide. Wait a minute, this is a K. B reaction. As soon as we recognize that, well, this problem becomes pretty straightforward. So we're going to use Ka times Kb equals Kw. So our Ka for nitrous acid, 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth times the Kb that we're trying to solve for is equal to Kw at 25 degrees Celsius, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And then solving, dividing both sides by 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4th. We'll end up getting the Kb of nitrite, which ends up being 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11th. And since this is the KB reaction, that means that KB is indeed our KEQ. Oh. So this problem involves us finding a KSP. Well, since this is going to be an equilibrium problem, that means when in doubt, we're going to ice it out. And it turns out this is going to be a reverse icing process. Um, reverse icing, not only is it what sounds to be a delicious type of cake, um, but also it's going to be the strategy that we can use to figure this out. So let's figure out, let's fill in any information we can in this ICE table. Well, we know the pH of a saturated solution, meaning a s solution at equilibrium. If the pH is equal to 9.83, 
That means that the pOH of the solution would be 4.17. Now, if we know the pOH, that means we can solve for the hydroxide concentration. Because remember, p means the negative log of something. So the pOH is the negative log of hydroxide. It's equal to 4.17. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by negative 1 and do 10 to both powers. And I'm going to end up getting that the hydroxide concentration is equal to 6.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. And it turns out that piece of information is exactly what we need to fill out our ICE table up here. So let's get to it. In this problem, we're just dissolving this manganese hydroxide. We can assume, unless told otherwise, that we're starting with zero and zero. And now we know that at equilibrium, aka saturation, we have 6.76 times 10 to the negative fifth molar of hydroxide. Since we know the equilibrium amount, that means that our change to get from zero to that was just plus 6.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, if we know the change in one thing, we can find the change in everything else. So the manganese, we only get one manganese for every two hydroxides. So that means that to find the change of this, it's going to be plus one half of the 6.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. I did not plan the spacing very well. Which means that we're going to have 3.38 times 10 to the negative fifth molar manganese at equilibrium. And really, we don't care about this stuff here. It's not going to be relevant. So, then to find the value of Ksp, all we have to do is write out our equilibrium expression. So our equilibrium expression here, Ksp equals Mn2 plus times hydroxide squared. So our manganese concentration is going to be 3.38 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then we're going to multiply that by our hydroxide concentration. 6.76 times 10 to the negative fifth squared. Which means our KSP is going to equal none other than... Dun, 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 dun. 1.55 oh. times 10. Pretty cool, right? How do you, to do you the, have that thing? I do. I want well, it. the chemistry department has it at least. I really wanted one of And them. that's how we get our KSP. So.